Johnny's giving out the large candy bars tonight, so not the little stuff. So he's uh, dressed up as a coach. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, welcome. Um, quickly, um, here we go again. I, I, I like my team. Um, we're off to a good start in practice. Um, <clears throat> We're working, we're working extremely hard. It's one of these teams where, like, uh, last year at this time, I was trying to give them a practice hard. This year, it's, I think they've got that figured out. We're practicing hard, um, and we've been getting better. Uh, we were really moving quickly for a while, slowed down a little bit, but uh, it's a fun team to coach. Much, I don't know, I've heard teams say we got to get, people say we have a young team. I feel like we're much more experienced than we were last year. We got eight of our top ten guys back. Um, you know, the three freshmen become sophomores. We had, we had three physical guys. We're a much more physical team. We played a public <coughs> scrimmage, or not a public, private scrimmage last week, um, which was good just to see where we are. We we're a little bit more physical than we were last year, which is good. It was what we were trying to do. So, um, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a team that's coachable, uh, pretty intelligent team. So far, so good. So we'll see as we get started this week uh, in front of some people, and then you know, about eight or nine days away from our opening. With that, I'll open it up for questions. And as we all know, time is money. That's where our fully managed approach to IT can help. With proactive remote monitoring and management, we're able to keep tabs on your IT infrastructure 24/7, 365 days a year. And when a problem does arise, our technical experts can quickly resolve it, in many cases before you're even aware that there was a problem at all. For an affordable fee, we'll provide the monitoring, technical support, and full problem resolution you need to stay productive. Want to learn more? Drop us a line today to see exactly how we can help keep your systems running smoothly and keep you focused on what matters most, growing your business. of the, the, the young guys and, and, and obviously a guy like Sean coming in um, in terms of their ability to step right in without sort of waiting, you know, making the other guys wait for them. Yeah, I, I, I do think the three new guys and, uh, have caught up. We didn't slow down for them. Um, since that speech, we've had a little couple of ankle injuries. Um, the slow practice down a little bit, um, but the practice has still been good. But I, I do think Daryl's a quick learner, Bruno's a quick learner, obviously Sean Obi's two different programs, a little bit older, so um, you know he, he's been able to do it. But, but practices were really competitive. When everybody's healthy, they're really competitive, and uh, we got a competitive group, and we've made a lot of competition in practice. I think that's really helped practice the guys we've been trying to win each field. So we were getting a lot better during this stretch. Hey coach. Jason Dumas, WDBM. Uh, you guys are going to rely a lot on your sophomores this year, Kev and uh, Justin. How uh, has their summer been? I know Kev was playing with mm -hmm. USA basketball and so, uh, are they kind of aware that there's going to be a big burden on them, kind of, so to speak. Well, yeah, we're going to rely. We relied on them last year quite a bit, too. <coughs> you know, so hopefully, I think they're much more prepared. They're much more prepared to practice, much more prepared in the summer, um, how they handle things academically, they're further along. Uh, so uh, they're, they're more prepared for what lies ahead. I do think every one of them has gotten a lot better. Um, Anthony's really playing at a high level. Doing a great job. I think last week in practice, he was like 18 assists, four turnovers, which is really, really good. Um, you know, so he, he's improved. He's shooting the ball well. Just every phase, he's gotten better. And he's got a better understanding of what I want out of him, uh, which is good. Kevin Herter's naturally just gotten better. Um, you know, knows how to play. Feels more comfortable doing more things for Kevin. Uh, putting the ball in his hands a little bit more. Um, so doing different things. We're still putting in the system and we're nowhere near where we're going to be, but he's improving. I think Justin Jackson, he's one of those guys now that um, is, 
much more competitive every day, plays harder every day, has added to his game. Now, there's a lot on his plate because he played primarily at the four last year, four, so he's playing some three, so he can play bigger lineups. Uh, so he has to learn that, plus, you know, we're doing some things differently. He's playing four also. So right now, you know, there's a lot on Justin's plate, but he's going to improve his body. It's great. His body fat's good. So uh, yeah, those those three guys had terrific freshman year years, and uh, you know we feel like they're going to step up and be a big part of what we do. Mark, with uh, Mello gone, just how much he kind of dictated the ball screens and, and just how much consistent ran through him last year. But how much different will the system I guess look this year and just how much more balanced um, for a guy especially like Kevin will he get more opportunities at like two and will you see more opportunities for that like that? Yeah and, and I think our system will look a lot the same. Um, are we trying to do we're doing some different things um, in our small uh, guard, four guard lineup we're doing some different things which I think is going to be really good for us. Um, yeah, and, and, and Kevin is going to be more involved. I think late in the year last year, he was pretty pretty involved. You know, think about the Northwestern game, the Xavier game, he really played at a high level, was more involved uh, for us. But I think everybody, Anthony will get more opportunities, Justin will get more opportunities. Justin will play differently at times when he's at the three for us, he'll be in more ball screens. Um, so yeah, I think last year, uh, Mello was 71% of our ball screens. Um, we won't have a player at that number this year. The rest of the team is 29%. It'll be more like, you know, across the board, 40, 30, 30, whatever, you know, whatever those numbers are. But, uh, you know, there'll be more guys in the line. Questions? Uh, Chris in the back. Hey, Chris. Uh, Mark, Chris the new schedule with the conference uh, starting in early December, what are your thoughts on that to get right into it uh, pretty early on in the season? Yeah, it's one of those things I think we agreed on as coaches because we wanted to have a little bit of Christmas, let the players have some time off. And I think last year we played and we gave the guys two and a half days off. We had to bring them back on Christmas, and that's just not right. Um, so. By playing those two games in December, and you know, one at home where our students are here, uh, which would be great. Um, we just felt like it was the right thing to do, and uh, gives everybody a little bit of a break over Christmas. And we, it's going to be a really gr a big grind for us this year. Uh, with the you know, tournament a week earlier. If you look at the schedule, it's just you know, that game after game after game after game. So uh, we kind of had to do it. Uh, I think. I, I was like, I did it when I was at Wichita State. We used to do it, and uh, I didn't mind it. Um, I mean, I feel that way on December 6th this year, or whatever. But uh, I think it's a good opportunity for us to play in front of our fans, get a couple out of the way, and just be, be a little bit better for the student athlete as the year goes on. Yeah. Peter Smart, call my son. Um, get back to Mello for a second. Uh, as great a player as he is. Players get to a point where they're ready to move on. When you have a great player like that who's so central to your to your program, is there a point where, as a coach, on a positive level, you're ready to move on and forward from that point? Oh, I don't know. I, you know, Melo was pretty special, and, and um, you know, he did a lot for our program, did a lot for me. So, you know, if Melo would have played here for the next 20 years, I wouldn't wouldn't have minded. Um, but obviously, uh, he has moved on. So, you have to move on. As a, as a program and as a coach, just move on. And we, had a, we had a great feeling down deep that that was his last year. We were going through the year, and um, so we prepared for it uh, as, as best we could with the guys we recruited. Um, so yeah, it's it's it's, 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 it's 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 I don't know. You have to ask the guys. I don't know if practice feels any different. You know, um, we're still running the same things. I've been doing this long enough to know you lose great players and you, and you move on. And, and um, great opportunity for guys to come up and be a big part of our program. But uh, he was special for us. You know, he really, you know, the last three years have been a lot of fun. And um, well, obviously, he was you know, a huge part of that. Heather. Heather McDonough, NBC4. Um, it's kind of sticking with the Mellow name. I mean, he became the leader. He was the obvious leader, even if he, you know, didn't want to be you know, the vocal person at that point. Um, now you've kind of got this three-headed monster. I mean, 
Are those guys the ones that you see taking over the leadership role? Obviously, even Demonte last year, LG Gill, the older guys, are these sophomores, now that they are sophomores, taking more of that leadership role? Are there some other guys that, you know, are doing what they need to do? Yeah, I, I think it's a, it, I think we have a bunch of leaders um, on this group, and I think it's a really easy team to lead. We have a lot of really good guys and coachable guys that are really about winning um, and doing the right thing. So, uh, are there more guys involved like um, Jared Nickens? Yeah, uh, even Bender. Um, you know, those guys uh, lead a little bit for us. Um, but, you know, Checo's been here a while. Deion Wiley stepped up at different times and, and, and been a leader. But um, I think the guy that's most natural. The guy that likes to talk the most and kind of um, gets it the most is Kevin Herter. You know, I'm not saying he's our leader. I'm saying he kind of gets it. He just naturally does it. But, you know, he um, does a good job with it. But even like Justin Jackson, who's a very quiet person, has become more vocal, um, more comfortable um, with who he is within our system. So I just think it's a really easy team to lead. I, I don't think it's going to, you know, at this point, we haven't lost any games yet either. So, um, but uh, it's it's a good team. I think we got a bunch of leaders and a bunch of guys that follow the right way. Yeah, Bruce Posner, CBS Radio, Baltimore. Uh, Coach, you've had some good success in the Big Ten so far. Uh, is do you recruit to the Big Ten philosophy, maybe bigger, stronger, tougher? And is this team more geared to it? And also, what do you think about the move to 20 games in the Big Ten? Is that too much? I don't. I don't think we recruit to the Big Ten. Um, I think it's a myth that the Big Ten's bigger, stronger than other leagues, and slower as our guys that recruit against like to say. Um, it's a fast league. It's, it's, we got a lot of different teams. Where Purdue was a big, strong team last year. And you have some finesse teams uh, that like to get up and down. But um, I recruit the best players that I can get uh, that I think fit our system. And then we try to coach that way. Um, there was obviously, we felt like we were a little small last year at time. We were obviously very young. And it was, it was hard for us to compete on the boards. What I have heard is that you need to get old to be successful in this league. And we kind of haven't figured that out yet. Now, we've been pretty successful, second, second, and third. Um, but we haven't been old. And uh, I think Des Wells, you know, that was a pretty old team. And, you know, we had a heck of a year that year. Um, you know, Wisconsin could have won the national championship if that you know, had finished ahead of us, but we were right behind them. So um, trying to get old is, is what we're trying to do and do it the right way. But uh, So we'll see. But we recruit what works for us and works for me. And, you know, I was lucky enough to be around a lot of good coaches. I coach a lot of different ways. I'm just trying to figure out how to win. 20-game um, schedule, it's a lot. You know, um, it, it, it's it's – the, the Big Ten thinks that it's one of those things where we'll get more teams in the NCAA tournament. Okay, so we used to play 16 games, we averaged six teams or whatever, 5.9 teams, and all of a sudden we go to 18 league games, we averaged like, you know, 6.9 teams, or whatever it was. They didn't stress, they think we're gonna, you know, get up around eight teams uh, in the league, because our RPI is gonna be so high. So we'll see. Um, it's a lot, it's hard, and uh, you know, there's so much, each game, you know, our league's really good right now. We added three new good coaches, and it just it puts a lot on the players. But it is what it is, and um, so I think we'll keep that format where we play two games moving forward in December, and then you know, play 18 on the backside. We have Don right there. Uh, Marcus, both your son. Uh, in terms of what you've seen from Checo uh, this preseason, uh, obviously last year he struggled from even before the Preseason yeah. started with injuries and then sort of carried over throughout the year, but obviously part of the end of the year. But um, what have you seen from him? And now that he's a senior, do you, do you see him being able to be, you know, sort of a very productive, consistent guy that shown flashes of me? Yeah. Well, let's let's say this: he he was out for about six months, maybe seven. I, I lost count. He was out for. A he really started going full speed like two weeks before practice started. So when we start practice, which was the 30th, whatever it was, the first, um, he was limping pretty good. He was 
his ankle was 100% sound, but mentally he wasn't there yet. Um, and so it's been a it's been a real process for him. Um, he's always trying to protect that foot. He, when he jumps, he'll land on the good one, the good foot, not the other one. So it's more of a mental thing for him. Now I have seen in the last seven eight days he's continually gotten better. And yesterday was his best practice of the year, and actually I didn't see him favoring that foot yesterday for the first time. Now, he might have been, but when I went back and watched film, I didn't see it as much. He was much more confident. And we're playing through our post more this year. Uh, Bruno, him, even Bender, and, you know, we're going to post Justin, you know, to the R, we'll post Kevin some. Um, you know, he's getting a little bit more confidence uh, down there because uh, we're, we're throwing the ball in there. Last year we never really threw the ball in there, so um, let's give him a chance to get more confidence. So we'll see, Don, you know, it's, Kids had bad luck. He's been hurt a lot, and um, he was hurt every day last year. There was never a day he wasn't hurt. Um, so, knock on wood, he's heading in the right direction right now. So we'll see. Barry, Barry, Barry Spiller from Washington Post. Mark, the, the sport as a whole kind of opens in weird situations this year. I wonder, since that story broke, what your discussions with your colleagues, fellow coaches, have there been any? What? Any, any introspective moments about the sport that you're in and how what needs to happen going forward? Well, I've had a lot of conversations. That's between me and them, um, and things that we've talked about. Um, it was unfortunate what happened. Um, I think we were all shocked in our business that it was the FBI uh, that was involved. So that, that took it to another level for a lot of people, including the public. Um, I think we have a great game. I think we have a great sport. I think the majority of us do it the right way. Um, and I think college basketball is going to be really good this year. I think we have a lot more better teams than we've had in the past. So I'm excited about that. But because of what's happened, you know, we have to fix it. And um, I don't have the answer. Now, I've talked to Jim Haney, president of NABC, and I've told him privately. So we made him what I think could help. And they put this commission together. And uh, there's a lot of things that need to be changed. And, uh, you know, they're going to meet three or four times. I think I read the other day they're going to try to meet three or four times and, you know, come, come to us and as coaches and, and figure out what the best thing is. But I think we're a year away for major changes. It takes time, uh, you know, hopefully sooner. But um, we have a great game. And, uh, it was disappointing, uh, but I, I, hopefully uh, we can learn from it, and off the court we can become better. Because I think on the court we're going to have a really good product this year. Uh, Mark Johnson, Tesla Times. Uh, you brought in a couple of playmakers in the bench. Uh, how, uh, Daryl Marcel, Sean Obi, how are you really trying to make sure the offense keeps up? Uh, yeah, well, I don't know who's starting to be honest with you, Lamar. Um, it's day by day uh, with us, but I do think we have a chance to have a deep team this year if guys stay healthy. We're talking about two guys that have been hurt a lot, um, uh, and, and, and Dion's hurt right now and twists his ankle in the, in the scrimmage uh, on Saturday. Uh, my, minor. Um, but not practicing. But I do think with Jerry Nickens' experience, um, Deion Wiley's experience, Checo, um, Daryl Marcel is a really good player. Uh, I'm not, I don't know who's starting. I really don't. I know probably a couple guys that are going to uh, as of as of today. But I do think we have nine, eight, nine, nine and a half guys that really can play a little bit. So let's find that rotation, keeping guys healthy, keeping guys confident. I think we would be a deeper team than we've been the last two years. I don't know if we'd be better, but we can be a deeper team. Coach uh, Dave Preston, WTOP Radio. What's impressed you about the freshmen so far this year? What do you expect from them? And it, it, you've had a track record here of getting a lot out of guys just coming into the program. What do you think it is about your program that allows that, that fosters that? <clears throat> well, um, unfortunately, every year guys have had to play as freshmen because um, guys leave. You know, guys move on, um, and we, you know it's been it's, it's hard in college basketball today to 
really build it and keep guys around. And it's, it's just a different climate. Um, but with that said, um, I like these two a lot. And um, I'll start with Daryl, a local kid. Um, Daryl's playing multiple positions for us. Daryl gives us a defender on the perimeter that we you know, really needed. Um, he's got great size, good rebounder. He's a, he's, he's a winner. He makes plays. He was terrific in the scrimmage on Saturday, um, and uh, it's a guy that uh, loves to compete and loves to do the right things to win. He's not afraid to do all the dirty things, uh, little things that help you be successful. So he's going to have to play multiple positions. It's going to be tough for him doing that. He's going to be our backup point guard as of today. We'll see moving forward. Um, and then he'll also, you know, play a lot on the wing for us because of his size. So. Be a lot on his plate. I really like Daryl. Love his attitude. Works hard. Really improved his shot since high school. Shoot the ball well for us uh, in practice. Uh, Bruno Fernando is one of the hardest playing dudes I've ever been around. Now, he's been hurt, so um, had a high ankle sprain. He's been out about two weeks. Uh, we hope to have him back for the opener. Don't plan on having him Thursday uh, for the game. He's starting to do a little bit of practice. Do a little bit more today in practice. Hopefully. Um, but he's a hard playing dude that we really haven't had. I, I guess he's a 6'10 Des Wells, kind of, you know, plays that hard, that competitive. Um, and he plays to exhaustion. You put him over on the sideline, give him a little Gatorade, and he comes back out and does it again. The kid's amazing. Shot blocker, great rebounder, very vocal. The big guys are very vocal. Um, and we really haven't had one like him. Athletic, skilled. Um, he's a good player, so uh, yeah, fans are gonna like enjoy him. It's just getting him healthy and getting him, you know, back to 100. percent I feel really great about both those young guys. Kyle, Kyle Donick, the dime back. Uh, Coach, I know you enjoyed having the two point guard lineup last year. I mean, how much has Ann enjoyed take complete control of the offense now? And also, does that open up other opportunities for Kevin at the two? Yeah, well, I, I think. I think Anthony just has a better grasp of me. You know, last year he was, just, he was thrown into it. He had a terrific year, um, but now I think he understands. It's the second time through, you know, the summer, the second time through um, the fall, the second time through the first practice of the year, and all that kind of stuff. So he's 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 really gotten better. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll, you know, we'll play big lines with Anthony the one, Kevin at the two, Justin at the three, and two big guys. Five. So, yeah, Kevin. Kevin was a point guard in high school. So, me being a point guard, Deion Wiley played a little point guard in high school. Daryl Marcel played a little bit in high school, more with his AAU team. Um, and so, I like guys that know how to play and, and, and think the game uh, a little bit. But I, I think there's going to be more opportunities for both those guys, Kevin and Anthony, uh, to help us be successful. You know, they're both good with the ball in their hands. I mean, Kevin is really good in ball screens. He uses his size and has a good feel. And he's, you know, plays with a good pace. And then Anthony's just so darn fast. He can get the ball wherever he, wherever he wants. So um, those two are, you know, going to be a big part of it. They were last year, but I think their, their role will be even more significant this year. I'll have two more questions, Terry, and then John. Coach Terry Cook, College Hoops Digest. Uh, I know last year at one point kind of begged teams to play zone defense, but there was definitely some struggles. Uh, is there anything that we've done strategy-wise this year or utilizing the new players to kind of attack that weakness that we had? Well, I, I don't remember begging anybody to play zone. Maybe I was begging them not to play zone. But um, no, I, I think we have a very smart team. Um, you know, we did win at Iowa, and they played zone the last 30 minutes of that game. And, um, you know, we didn't – when you go back and you watch, you watch film and you see the shots that you're getting. And really that's what it comes down to. And, and you know, I think we're, you know, getting good shots. Um, have we addressed it? Yes. Um, but, no. I know early in the year we played Syracuse. Probably going to play a little two-three zone. So hopefully by then we're much further along uh, in our zone offense. Anybody else on the schedule? I don't know yet. But we're just kind of getting started with that. I didn't. Unfortunately, I didn't have the guys all summer. I was with them, guys were overseas or 
injured or not in school yet. We never had enough bodies to really practice this summer. So we're, I'd say, I wouldn't say we're behind because we have more veterans, but uh, we don't have as much in as I want. But uh, I don't see that being a problem for us. I think we're going to be a really good zone offense team. And, um, you know, it just really comes down to making open shots. And if you don't, you get the second chance points. John, nice question with that. Uh, John McNamara, Annapolis Capital. I was wondering if you've had any particular message for um, Anthony this year or anything specific that you want from him. I mean, you're probably going to have to ask him to do more. You're probably going to have to try and tell him not to take too much on his shoulders. I, I just, you know, kind of don't know what kind of conversations you've had with him or what you've talked about with Melo Vaughn now. Well, you know, I don't think it's all about Anthony. I, I, Anthony's playing terrific. Uh, I think when Anthony, but my message to Anthony is make the right decisions. So if you're open, you shoot it. If you got a chance to pass it, read read the situation because we have a read and react offense in, in, in everything that we do. So it's about making the right decisions. Um, if Anthony does that, you know we're a much better offensive team. So I don't I don't want to put Ant put that kind of pressure on Anthony that he's filling Melo's shoes because he's not. We got a whole group of guys. And we have a nice team and. Um, so really my message right now is because, because you're just putting it all in, man. You just every day you're just you're overloading these cats, man. And you just you're putting this in, you're going, and it's overwhelming to them. So but they're further along because they're sophomores. Anthony's further along. But let's try to get that in and as we get closer to games, so we'll learn we learn something from our private scrimmage, we'll learn something Thursday. But as we get closer, I think Anthony knows the message is just make the right plays and get us, you know, get the ball to the right people at the right time. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, everybody. We'll have our uh, student athletes up here shortly.